Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are all experiencing an economic renaissance, and the reasons for their economic boom might surprise you. We're starting with Brazil, since that's the first country in the BRICS acronym. Just like the remaining countries of the BRICS block, Brazil is one of the largest growing economies in the world. In fact, one of the reasons they were put in the same alliance with Russia, India, China, and South Africa is precisely because of their growth potential. Currently, the Brazilian economy is fueled by 213 million people who produce a GDP of around $2.19 trillion. With a GDP per capita of around $10,352 in 2024 and the purchasing power parity GDP equal to $22,709, Brazil still has a lot of potential for growth, although maybe not as much as India. The largest percentage of that GDP comes from the services sector, which accounts for 58.91% of Brazil's GDP. In second place is industry, with 20.7% of the GDP, and 6.81% is for agriculture. Brazil's imports in 2023 was equal to around $240.8 billion, while their exports were just under $340 billion that same year. Thanks to the BRICS alliance, China has become the country's leading import and export partner, which helps Brazil detach from its reliance on the US and EU. Brazil is a federal country that has an area of 8.5 million square kilometers, which is the same size as the continental United States. It comprises 26 states, not including the federal district, and those states have well over 5,500 municipalities. And while governing a country with this much diversity comes with a lot of challenges, Brazil has managed to do it and has a high human development index. Still, the country needs to deal with the high income inequality and wealth inequality, as well as the country's growing corruption, but the leading political party is making significant progress. But before we tell you more about the Russian economic growth, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it so far. Despite the never-ending sanctions imposed by the West, the Russian economy is growing stronger than ever. The sanctions were supposed to weaken Russia, but instead, the country adapted. The economy is standing strong, and Vladimir Putin is about to be re-elected president for the fourth time. How did they manage to do this? Simply by being well prepared. They were prepared for the Western sanctions, so they consolidated their financial and energy markets and turned to their Eastern allies, the biggest of which is China, a BRICS partner. Thanks to the ESPO pipeline, Russian oil could easily be supplied to China, lessening their reliance on the West. And today, after Saudi Arabia cut down their oil exports, Russia is the world's largest exporter of oil, which keeps the economy afloat. And despite their attempts to cut Russia from the rest of the world, the country managed to keep its population satisfied by injecting massive amounts of cash into the economy, subsidies and support for families whose enlisted members never returned from the war. On top of that, the mobilization led to labor shortages. This made jobs easy to find and keep. As a consequence, wages have risen in the past year, where even the lowest earners experienced a 20% raise. This type of economy might not be ideal or sustainable, but Russia is growing, at least on paper. What happens to their economy in the future is in the hands of Russia's president, as is everything else. With a population of 1.42 billion people, India represents the second largest economy in the BRICS alliance. With a GDP of around $3.95 trillion, or $16 trillion in purchasing power parity, India is one of the largest and fastest growing economies in the world. In 2023 alone, the country's GDP grew by 8.2%, and this year, they've already measured 7%. And that number is only expected to go up since India's GDP per capita is around $2,698 or $11,112 in purchasing power parity. The four largest industry sectors that contribute to the nation's high GDP include services, which account for 53.3% of the total GDP, industry, which brings in 28.3% of India's GDP, agriculture is a close third with 18.4% of GDP, and infrastructure comes in last, accounting for only 3.4% of GDP. And while the country is still struggling to take around 6.7% of its population, or 80 million people, above the poverty line, the country's political leaders are investing heavily in what they call Vixit Bharat 2047. Basically, this is the goal of the leading political party that promises to make India a developed nation by 2047. 
While they do have their problems, the country has been trending upward for the past 10 years, and they recently replaced the UK as the fifth largest economy in the world. The country is fighting corruption by making a push for digital governance. Recently, the country topped the global digital payments growth thanks to the specialized phone payment system. Indians from some of the poorest and remotest parts of the world can buy daily essentials without ever needing cash. All they have to do is scan the QR code on their phone, and they can buy a packet of bread. Thanks to a new digital payment system, India is preparing its population for the world of tomorrow. And that's not all. India realizes that industrial growth won't happen without proper infrastructure. That's why the government has been investing hundreds of billions of dollars in major infrastructure projects over the years. Take a look at this breathtaking new subway in Kolkata. If you go to India's major cities, all you will see are cranes, cranes, and more cranes. That's because the country has managed to build approximately 33,554 miles or 54,000 kilometers of national highways in the 10 years between 2014 and 2024. In addition, India's exports over the past 20 years have quadrupled, going from $100 billion to around $400 billion today. The same goes for commodities. And while the country does face some challenges with corruption and low workforce productivity, it still has several free trade agreements with other nations and blocs like ASEAN, SAFTA, South Korea, the UAE, Japan, and others. This brings us to the world's second largest economy and the single biggest economic powerhouse among the BRICS member states, China. Despite its size, China still has a lot of room for growth. And unlike the remaining members of the BRICS alliance, China is actually the only socialist country that's also a global superpower. In the third quarter of 2024, China recorded an annual growth rate of 4.6%. And even though this is a pretty high number when you consider the other developed economies in the world, which grow at a rate of 2 to 3% per year, it was still lower than the growth in Q2, measured at 4.7%. Both these numbers fell short of China's goal for 5% annual growth. To increase economic growth, Chinese policymakers announced that they will be introducing a new wave of economic measures that will reduce mortgage rates, which will allow banks to lend more and reduce reserve requirements. This is because while the country's factory output rose by 5.8% and retail sales increased by 3.3%, property investment sank by an astonishing 10.1% which resulted in a plunge of home values by 22.7%. This growth goal was set by President Xi Jinping, who stated in 2017 that China would be moving from high-speed growth to high-quality growth. This so-called high-quality growth is fueled by sectors like generative AI systems, renewable energies, and semiconductors. However, the biggest factor that contributes to high-quality growth would be having access to supply chains and global markets. And China has not been great on the geopolitical front. Their tensions with the US have caused a great rift and divide. These and many other economic fragmentations could lead to a 7% decrease in global economic output, which in dollar amounts equal to around $7.4 trillion. Still, China's GDP is set at $18.27 trillion, with a growth of 5.35 in 2023. The country's GDP per capita is $12,968, while the purchasing power parity is more than double that, at $26,310. The Chinese economy is the largest in the BRICS bloc, and as a result, they wield tremendous power over the other nations. While the new development bank, the BRICS equivalent of the IMF, says that the $50 billion of investment capital is equally divided among the member states, China holds a disproportionate amount of power due to its sheer size. On the opposite end, the country with the smallest economy among the five original members is South Africa. South Africa is the only African founding member of BRICS, which is also a partner of the G20 nations. According to the most recent trends, the country's economy rose by 0.4% in the second quarter of 2024, but experienced 0% growth in the first quarter of this year. This happened for the first time in many years. Out of the 10 major industries in South Africa, seven increased in Q2, and three of those, finance, real estate, and the business service sector, contributed the most to that growth, being responsible for 0.3% of the 0.4% of the growth. The trade, manufacturing, electricity, gas, and water sectors also showed considerable growth this quarter. 
And this is a broader trajectory of the South African economy since the 1980s. Back then, the country's GDP was measured at around $148 billion, while the GDP per capita started off at $5,110 in purchasing power parity. Over the past 45 years, that number has been gradually increasing so that today, in 2022, South Africa is on the fast track to becoming one of the rare trillion-dollar economies of the world. In 2022, South Africa's GDP was equal to $949.8 billion, while the GDP per capita increased threefold to $15,556. As a result, South Africa never fails to rank among the G20 nations every year, despite having a lot of state-owned enterprises, or SOEs. The country has approximately 700 SOEs, which are an integral part of the South African economy. That being said, the country does have its fair share of challenges when it comes to foreign investment. Business executives have said that the country's biggest hindrances were the inefficient government bureaucracy, political instability, and corruption as the three largest challenges to business in the country. Despite this, South Africa is one of the rare nations that's collaborating with partners in the West, like the International Monetary Fund and the Department for International Development, but also being an integral part of the BRICS bloc and receiving major loans from the New Development Bank. 